<laughs> but that's that's because Kit Harry Kit Harrington, man, th- he's in a movie with uh, Andy Samberg where they play tennis tennis guys who yeah, play yeah 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 yeah. F- yeah. So I know Seven he's got days com- of hell or something. Yes, I know he's got comedy chops. You know, I know he's got comedy chops. It's just nice seeing him happy and not glowering. This is it. You know, if there's a movie that has two or movie or a piece of media that has two men from Game of Thrones, one of them is the bad guy, period. That's it. <laughs> this is a rule. This is an axiom. I'm willing to stake my life on this. And once you see that, you know, Kit Harrington is the good is, is the happy, cheerful, go lucky guy. Yeah. The other guy's the bad guy. Yeah, but I other- mean, you know, he's yeah. the Superman esque, right? You know, he's the the villain. I think that it was never. Yeah, it was, it was never a surprise. Right. It wasn't a surprise at the end that he was the villain. I did like, though, the way that, oh, by the way, actually, uh, the Celestials, uh, they kind of want everybody to die because that's how they're born. And so this is how things go. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> I, to me, that was a surprise because as much as I get into comics, uh, a lot of stuff that Jack Kirby creates on his own, just for me personally, really weird, really out there. I you know, love he, that. Yeah. And, and, and on comics, it's 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 gorgeous. Because the the one problem that people who are super into comics might have with this movie is that, like we were saying, it's a little dark. But if you look at a page of Jack Kirby art, my God, it'll singe your eyes, the colors, man. It's there's a <laughs> little there's a literal phrase called the Kirby crackle, you know, uh-huh. it's, it, where you have a little circle of power, but there are little dots of a different color around it. It's it, it looks amazing. And so here everything's very muted. Mm-hmm. But it's a great it's a great movie. And Great. you know what I love too. I was re- I had to do some research for this for the RT is wrong episode. And uh, Barry Keoghan was like, "Hey, do I need to use an American accent?" Chloe's, I was like, "No, I'm speaking your Irish accent." And so he's super blue collar Irish. He's like, "Man, like blue collar Irish are going to see a superhero for the first time ever." He was really excited. Uh-huh. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry was like, "Do I need to get buff?" And she's like, "No." And like he said, he almost <laughs> cried. She's like, "I just want you who you are." Uh, Kamal Nanjiani. Uh, got buff and she got mad at him. Like she's like, I didn't yeah. want this. He's like, well, he didn't even take the shirt off. Yeah, and like he, she, but she said, I didn't want this. And he's like, well, I see the way it is. Uh, and also Lauren Ridloff too. You know what's interesting? I read some interviews. She's a Macari in this, and mm-hmm. I guess she was having problems with Chloe Zhao's direction. And so mm-hmm. Angelina Jolie, who's a director, was like, hey, get a red uh, pointer for her because. Mm-hmm. She just had to react when everyone else reacted. But then on set, they got a red pointer. So every time she saw it, she could react on time with the rest of the crew. Mm. Uh, but so this was a crew that was supportive of each other. They wanted right. them to be who they were. They I don't know. I liked every you know, the only complaint I have about this movie is Don Lee mm-hmm. as Gilgamesh gets killed. Dude yeah. destroys billions of zombies and train a Busan. Right. Yes, he does. Uh, and and then in this one, they kill him off. There's no because, you know, they're like, oh, you're supposed to care that a character dies. But we don't know him. So we don't care that a character dies. Keep Don Lee a badass alive. Don't <laughs> you, you know what I mean, Norbert? Like if you want to make if you want to kill somebody, do it after seven episodes to, to oh, make an impact. Uh, don't just kill somebody like, to, oh, because we have to have stakes. Like, don't kill Don Lee. Dude's like the best I, movie puncher on the planet, and you kill him. Dude, he's not just punching. He is punching the life out of these massive, vascular creatures who just literally stab you to death and then drain your life force. He was, And, and he's got such a great smile, and he's so nice. You absolutely believe everything when he's, when he's trying to take care of, uh, you know, going insane – Angelina Jolie, he's he's adorable. Yeah, Man, I agree. He just slams things in the face. Yeah, but I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do my first award here, and uh, Go we've it. gone away from awards, but MFF we don't stick to plans ever. No, we don't. So um, no, we don't. I'm gonna say the camera bit when mm-hmm. um, uh, Harish Patel, who's who's who might steal this movie, uh, I would say. You know, <laughs> I as, love this character. Yeah, and but he has that nice camera, then that gets bashed, and he has another camera that gets bashed, and he has another camera. He's like always come prepared, and always. it's just. He just you love the guy in this movie. He's wildly yeah. endearing. Uh, and so he's a longtime Bollywood star. And he said his life changed after this movie came out and everyone started recognizing re- recognizing him in the States. But he That's didn't so just cool. feel like comedic relief. He felt like he's like, oh, I thought you were a vampire. Uh, to, <laughs> to Kingo. Like it's right. It's it's oh, no, I love the camera scene because they just keep breaking and breaking. And there was a thing where 
this is all like I'm so tired of trailer culture. Somebody saw him in a trailer and like, oh, we mm-hmm. just caught we just caught a mistake. There's a cameraman in the shot. Like, that was the thing, Norbert. <laughs> There's a lot it's of like, hate in the planet these days, oh, brother. Like, I hate you. And oh like, my god, this movie though, man, it's a good movie. I don't it understand. Uh, you know, I, I have a friend Jack. He has a, a the alter ego alter ego podcast. Like, he and I were talking about this, and we just love this movie. I mean, it's no, it's a, it's a great. It's a great movie because even though the two love in, the love interests, they don't have much chemistry. The rest of the cast, every time they get together, you get that these people have known each other for a long time. They've worked together. Every time they say, this is my friend from college, it's hilarious because yeah. they do act like the people that you meet in college and you're just hanging out together. You know, the way that Sprite gets along with uh, Ajax, the mother figure. It's 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 beautiful, you know, and how you got the super dour Icarus, but the rest of them are just like, oh, shut up, dude, whatever. You're such yeah. a movie guy. Uh, they they seem like they really like each other, and it's a, it's a family movie. It's about getting back together, you know. Why did we why did we split up? You know, we should have always stayed together. We need each other. We're better when we're together, and that's a powerful message, especially today. It's a good I do, movie. I do think, I do I I I just knew when I'm walking out was that. It sometimes I wish Chloe Zhao would just would have totally wanted to make a Marvel movie or I wish Marvel <laughs> would have let her make her movie. I do think there are elements of like comedic relief and other elements that take away from because imagine if this would have been pretty heavy, like I would have enjoyed this, but I think I would have enjoyed it as an MCU movie. But I do feel like mm-hmm. it pinballs in tone a little bit, but I still like yeah. it. I still like it a lot. And yeah, I also think, too, like, they're like, listen, we need you, you to introduce 40,000 characters in one movie. We need mm-hmm. you to set up Harry Styles. We need you to set up uh, Kit Harrington. We need you to set up all these different characters for more movies in one movie. Like, that's not, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is just a bunch of idiots coming together. These are immortals. And also, too, Norbert, I don't know if you thought about this, but what annoyed me was they had to constantly explain why they didn't help out with Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. You know why they didn't help out? Because the movie wasn't greenlit. Like That's it's, right. it's yeah. You shouldn't. Yeah. You know, you know, fans should understand that. I hate telling people what to do, but you know, this movie was greenlit <laughs> afterwards, so you don't yeah. need an hour explaining why. Like you don't yeah. need that. You don't like to say we were told not to intervene, or <laughs> oh, when that happened, we were on planet blah 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 fighting That's blah right. blah blah. You know, like it. It just. Well, those You're, are the same. Those are the same people who run around Lord of the Rings. Well, why didn't the birds just fly them there? The end. Because the movie needs to happen, bro. Just calm down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The birds, like, you know, birds were busy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be nice. Be nice. Like, yeah. You were supposed and, to keep it like under wraps too. Like they exactly. wanted to be quiet. Like it's just Norbert. Like I don't know the whole thing of just you know, why didn't you help? Well, you know. We were told not to. <laughs> okay, move on. So we can have and more character it. stuff. It's done. And that's why the Eternals win my We Were Busy Award, you know, because mm-hmm. they, they weren't around for Thanos. And that's okay. It's fine. We don't need everybody, you know. The same people complain that there are too many characters in this movie. Wonder why we didn't add 10 more characters to the MCU during uh, Endgame. Like, yeah. shut up, bro. It can't be both. <laughs> it can't be both, man. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have two questions for you, Hoffmeyer. First of all, number one. If a movie takes place in England, does the double decker bus always have to be destroyed on screen? Yes. Or right? dr- like in Harry Potter, it needs to be driven like a double decker a Euro trip. It needs to have soccer hooligans in it. Uh, <laughs> chaos needs to happen on this bus. That that is my first question. And number two, when that character was introduced and their name was Sprite, did you immediately think to yourself, obey your thirst? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am a victim of urban marketing techniques from the late 90s, early 2000s. Anytime somebody says the word Sprite, I think, obey your thirst. And there's some guy with a basketball dunking it and then drinking Sprite. And I hate Sprite and Mountain Dew. Does Sprite do anything for your thirst? Uh, Sprite makes you thirstier because it's basically sugar, 99% and 1% water. Yeah. But you have to obey it. But I don't know. I, I know like when Makari starts going full speedster in this, Norbert, like that oh, was. Woo! I, I knew what she was doing. Yeah. 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 Even for a dark movie, again, it was a little dark, but there was nothing I couldn't see. Is that, is that, does that make sense to you? Yeah. You know? I just, I think it's this narrative. I really do. Someone reads it and then they're like, oh my gosh, like this yeah. is so dark. Yeah. No. Uh, 
This is another thing that, you know, this is another thing that Jerry Conway mentioned to me on the Twitter. You know, he said that back then there weren't so many stakes when he was writing for Marvel in the 70s. There weren't so many stakes. There weren't there wasn't social media paying attention to you. So you could just do what you want. And they had a long leash to just make stuff up, you know, Mm -hmm. because you didn't have these constant vultures just leaping in your face picking every single plot point apart you know comic book guy was funny on the simpsons but now there are millions of him and they're yeah. real <laughs> and it's messing up movies bro you can't get millions something. of views yeah oh man the you the rage videos on youtube for everything eternals is a good movie they managed to bring a creature out of the middle of the earth and the hand is just sticking up and they just leave it there that's great i think that's hilarious it's a mountain now they should the put like Celeste. condos on it. Oh, you think they won't? You think they won't? You, I mean, I mean, it's it's basically uh, leaving room for that Superman Returns Lex Luthor plot point where he was trying to destroy the world so that he could create new real estate for people to buy. Like everyone's going to be dead. I don't care. I'm Lex Luthor. OK, <laughs> you know, what I love too. at least this movie was save billions to like prevent billions from living. Sometimes there's that movie where it's like, I got to save this one person to prevent millions from dying. Right, right, <laughs> right. The whole plot well, line of this film is really palatable. The moral dilemma is high, though, man, because once once the Eternal breaks it down that, OK, we're born by destroying these planets and draining the life out of all the intelligent creatures on it. But at the same time, we make suns and then these suns create galaxies or we also create galaxies and suns and so this enables even trillions right so when kumail nagiani he's like nah you know what i he's kind of right you know but at the same time i'm not going to fight with you because by not allowing the earth to be destroyed yeah you do save billions but there are trillions of lives galaxies have untold numbers of, of intelligent life within them so it's a it's a it's a real interesting conundrum do i want to die no but at the same time i like it I, I found it to be real thought provoking, man. So I, I people who hate this movie just uh, I don't know what to say. They just like movies with trailers. Boom! Here comes the boom! Here comes the boom! You know what I mean? Yeah. Here come the boy from the boys from the south. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do some real quick Spider-Man No Way Home because we'll touch no. on this more in a future episode. Maybe do a standalone because there's so much to pack in this episode. Dude, um, there's a lot. There's a lot, and I need the home version to arrive. So that I can rewatch this again and again and again. Oh my god, I love this movie so much. I'm gonna say it features the best bread throwing of any yes. MCU movie with Zendaya throwing bread, which is amazing because <laughs> she just keeps throwing bread at Andrew Garfield, who has an amazing re- like. So the Amazing Spider-Man two, he, he and Emma Stone did the best they could, but they're still the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I love seeing Garfield in this, and also Matt Murdock catching a brick is oh my, my second award. I lost my shit uh, seeing that. <laughs> you and me both. But, but they all, my favorite things involve throwing. So you have bread yep. thrown and a brick thrown. So those are my two awards. But seeing Matt Murdock in this made me very happy. All right. Well, I have one award that is the This Is How Explosions Work Award. And I give that one to Aunt May because, unfortunately, spoiler alert, she dies from this explosion. Mind you, this is the same explosion that the Green Goblin causes in Spider-Man 1 when Aunt May's praying on her knees. And she just eats it. She's just like, finish the prayer. It's like, from evil. Like, how is that old woman alive? The yeah. wall is gone behind her, bro. And she was even closer to the wall than Aunt May was to that glass explosion. Oh, and man. Like, like, air is displaced. You got to die, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm Defoe, so, man. Oh, man. Oh, Defoe, Defoe's a monster. He just likes blowing up people and things. Yeah. But and yeah, my unintended. Of my last award, the Unintentional Backstreet Boys Award goes to when the three of them are just standing there with their masks off. Oh, my God. It's so dreamy. Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> and then just, hey, Peter. Yeah. Peter Parker. Oh, man. Yeah. But like, <laughs> like Toby Maguire, oh, I think he had his time to shine. He Andrew did. Garfield, you know, people like those movies, but I don't think they're the best. But he I think he rocked. He had a great 2021, by the way. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. And then he was also in Tick, Tick, Boom and Mainstream. Uh, yeah. Really good movie. So it was, it was wonderful seeing him do this. But just seeing his sense of humor and getting his redemption. And he saves MJ. But I got to tell you, man, the, she, she just kept throwing bread. She just throws yes, bread. Don't you have your Spidey sense? 
<laughs> it's not she's how it hilarious, works. dude. She's hilarious <laughs> in this movie, Zendaya. I love her droll. She's very droll. And, yes. Yes. And 